What's up, Pharmacy Nation? I'm Pharmacy Joe. Thank you for being a listener of the Elective Rotation, a critical care and hospital pharmacy podcast. This is episode 594. In this episode, I'll discuss whether the Sugaminex contraceptive interaction is being adequately considered and practiced. I have all the evidence supporting today's show linked up in the show notes at pharmacyjoe.com slash episode 594. Sugaminex is a gamma cyclodextrin that was designed to bind rocuronium and vecuronium for the purpose of reversing paralysis from these neuromuscular blocking medications. The prescribing information includes information that Sugaminex may interfere with the effectiveness of hormonal contraceptives. In vitro studies suggest that Sugaminex may bind to progesterone and therefore lower the free plasma concentrations. Both rocuronium and vecuronium are steroid-based neuromuscular blockers, and progesterone is a steroid-based molecule. Therefore, it makes sense that Sugaminex would bind progesterone the same way it binds rocuronium or vecuronium and cause this interaction. A recent survey published in Anesthesia and Analgesia was distributed to anesthesiology providers at a large tertiary care medical center. 155 surveys were completed, and while all but one respondent recognized the potential for Sugaminex interference with oral hormonal contraception, only about half recognized that the issue could also occur with other hormonal contraceptives like intrauterine devices and contraceptive implants. Furthermore, the survey found that many respondents reported rarely or never having discussed this drug interaction with patients in actual clinical practice, either preoperatively or postoperatively. Furthermore, most respondents reported rarely or never administering neostigmine to intentionally avoid this drug interaction. This is a single-center survey, and the result may not be generalizable to all institutions. However, it does raise the possibility that the extent of the Sugaminex contraceptive interaction is not fully known by anesthesia providers, and that education and systems may need to be put into place to mitigate this interaction. Pharmacists may wish to investigate the extent of their local anesthesia provider's knowledge and processes regarding this interaction and assist as needed. To access my free download area with 20 different resources to help you in your practice, go to PharmacyJoe.com slash free. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you in the next episode of the Elective Rotation.